In the past, I have ranked weapons and armor. I have also ranked all the positive and all the negative traits in RimWorld. But today, I'm ranking all the biomes that exist in vanilla RimWorld that you can experience and have fun with. I'm gonna basically rank it on the basis of how easy and safe it's gonna be for you to survive. No place is of course safe, no place is of course extremely easy. This is RimWorld after all. Now also I want to sprinkle a bit of coolness in there if a biome like feels really cool, it's iconic for RimWorld, I might give it a bit of a thumbs up but I will explain that as we go. We're gonna start from the hottest and we're gonna go to the coldest and we're gonna rank them all. So let's start with Extreme Desert. The name already tells you this is gonna be a pain in the ass, a hot pain in the ass. Of course, extreme desert is going to be a problem because there is really no soil that you can use. There's going to be some rocky so soil that you can plant your crops in, but it's going to take a while before your colony can take off and produce enough uh, food. You're going to need some more uh, research and technology for that to happen. Of course, the heat waves are also a big problem because they will kill your colonists, they will kill animals on the map which there are not many animals on the map and they'll definitely kill your refrigerated food if you're not prepared so extreme desert is definitely a hard tough start you also have a bunch of places with soft sand over there where you can't build as easily so that is of course a problem as well and there's really no wood because trees don't really grow in extreme desert so all of that combined definitely not a good place especially if you're more of a beginner to rim world we're gonna put this out here into C tier. Next we have desert, just desert, not the extreme kind. This one can be quite hot or can actually be quite cold. There are some cold deserts out there as well. It's gonna have a bit more vegetation than extreme desert. It's actually, it might get some patches of soil. It still will have some soft sand, but there's gonna be more animals because the temperatures are not that into extremes as in the extreme desert. Heat waves can still be a problem, but not nearly as much of a problem. Basically desert normal desert is just scale down extreme desert that has more chances for your survival and desert is one of those like unique iconic places where you think of RimWorld you you think of those first trailers showing the desert and all that such I think that gives it a bit of a boost over there you know, it definitely can be a problematic place to survive, but not nearly as problematic as Extreme Desert. I will actually put this bad boy up here into A tier. And yes, this might be my bias, and I admit that it might be my bias, but all you need is a bunch of dusters. Dusters are still king, they're amazing, and they will help you survive desert easily. And then we have arid shrubland. This is the easy version of the desert. It's still gonna be quite warm and most of them will still be like full year long growing period. It's, of course, you can also hit some that are not, but you know, you can, that's, that's not a problem. Most of these you'll be able to grow the whole year and it's gonna have plenty of soil. It's gonna also have a decent amount of animals as well. Trees are not gonna grow on its own that much there either, but you can plant them because now you actually are dealing with soil and it's really not a problem. It's really one of the, it's not one of the, it is the easiest of the hotter climates out there. So all of that combined really arid shrubland, it's, if you are new to gameplay, it's one of those easiest to survive. And it also looks pretty cool. We're gonna put it up here into S tier. Then we have Tropical Rainforest. What we have here is disease, hungry predators, and well, there's a lot of trees, so there's that, but it's jungle, so it's messy. It's gonna be hard to traverse around because oh, there's wines and all that such. It's gonna be slowing you down. It, sure, it's gonna slow down enemies as well, but this is, uh, this is pretty warm and wet and moist. Tropical rainforest, in my opinion, <laughs> can be pretty hellish, especially if you have some really, really hungry panthers and cobras and such constantly hunting you down and your poor, poor animals. You will have more rich soil than anywhere else though. Really, definitely more rich soil than in any of the arid climates where that doesn't really exist. But yeah, uh, tropical rainforest, while it's not the worst, it's definitely not the best. It's, 
I think the biggest problem for me is the, the quite high frequency of diseases that can happen over here. So we're gonna put this one into B tier. Now, if you ever played the game called Green Hell, Tropical Swamp represents that quite nicely. In that game, pretty much anything is trying to kill you. Everything from little tiny spiders you can barely see to snakes in the ground to leaves to I don't know, everything, everything tries to murder you. And that's the same in tropical swamps. You know, there's hungry predators all around and it's just a worse version of tropical rainforest. But now you also have plenty of marshy ground that you cannot build on. So you need to build uh, some bridges that cannot hold heavier uh, blocks. So you can't really put like stone walls on them. Of course, with mods, everything can be changed and be fixed and be easier, but we're looking at vanilla over here. So when it comes to vanilla stuff, Tropical Swamp has the highest disease frequency as well. You're gonna be hit by, on average, like two diseases or two disease waves every year. And early on, that can be a real killer for the colony when you don't have your medicine, you don't have good doctors, you don't have your medical base set up, you know, your hospital. And it also slows you down because your guys are sitting in beds trying to survive malaria and such instead of actually working. So as far as Tropical Swamp is concerned, it can go eat a something something we're gonna put it down here into f tier now let's go on the lighter side we got tempered forest everybody knows tempered forest is easy mode if this is your first time playing rim world this is the place you want to pick up and it can be full full year growth period you can also go down to like 20 they can be quite hot and quite cold it's tempered you know you can have decently cold winters and quite warm uh, summers it's it's all across the board and but temperate forest is just great it's you know it's not jungle it's forest and then grasslands so you can easily still move around you're not gonna have that many crazy hungry predators of course there's still gonna be bears and wolves or such that can happen but it's really not gonna be that problematic if you you know if you're early player that you're playing this for the first time it's gonna definitely help you because you can just build everything fast out of wood. It's then gonna burn down, so don't build out of wood. But still, it's the easy mode place. Plenty of animals, plenty of good place where you can build. We're gonna put it up here into S tier. Then we have Tempered Swamp, and by now you have an idea how I feel about swamps. I am not, <laughs> not too keen on them, but still, it is temperate. So while it's still gonna have more marshy soil, which means you can't build on it, and it's gonna have some higher disease frequency, not as high as a tropical swamp or tropical rainforest, it's still gonna be pretty decent, right? As long as you can get out of, you know, all of those marshy areas and build around them, it's gonna have more rich soil for you as well. So you can just enjoy that and uh, you, you can definitely quite easily survive in the temperate swamp, but it's definitely not the best place to be if I would have to pick where to live. So we're gonna put it out here into B tier. Now we get to cold climates and we start with boreal forest. I will have to admit, I really like boreal forests. It's one of my favorite biomes out there. Unfortunately, it does have usually quite a lot of swampy and marshy areas as well. So that can be problematic if you're trying to build a nice base because you're gonna have to kind of build all, uh, all around that. And you know, it can be obnoxious and problematic. But otherwise, I think uh, when it comes to cold biomes, of course, boreal forest is the easy mode. It can have decently warm summers as well. It can have pretty cold winters. And I think it can even be like no growable areas at all. Growth period is just gone. But most of them will have like half a year growth area so or growth period. So it's not really that big of a deal. There's going to be plenty of animals for you. You're going to have plenty of wood if you want that. It's going to be an all around great place. But you know, it can get pretty cold. So we're going to put this out here into a tier. Then we have cold bog. Yes, more swamps. Who doesn't like more swamps? I don't like more swamps. 
the same issues remain as with the other swamps. It's gonna be tougher to build because you're gonna have way less places to build, you know? The marshy areas can be obnoxious. And let's not talk about the pumps, please. The moisture pumps are one of the worst things in this game with how slow they are, but it's understandable, you know? So that's fine. A uh, cold bog, it's not gonna have that high of a disease uh, chance that like tropical swamp or uh, just normal swamp is gonna have but Again, it's gonna be harder to build and it's not gonna have any warm summers where you can just grow nicely It's not gonna have any rich soil for you where you're gonna be able to grow nicely because the winters can get pretty cold And it generally is a pretty cold place. So cold bog not a good place to start. We're gonna put it out here into C tier. Now we have Tundra. Tundra can be quite a problematic place. It can have, I think at best, like 20 growing days, a 20 day growth period in the whole year. So just that's just one third. And it's never gonna be very, very warm. So you won't be really be able to plant much and grow much. So you'll have to start thinking about hydroponics. Generally in that area, there's not that much animals that stick there, but you're gonna usually be getting big migrations every year, big migrations of animals, and then the predators that can be also around that you can hunt but the predators usually will get pretty hungry because you know not always being that many animals so you'll have to definitely shoot down any bears that you see but with proper planning this is if you understand the game a bit more if you've played a bit with proper planning tundras can be pretty easy mode you can you can definitely get around issues for starvation and such Especially once you've done a bit more research, but with proper planning even your first year You can get plenty of food that you will naturally have refrigerated because it's pretty cold area Over the whole winter and you're gonna be able to survive on that just hunting down animals. So pack your guns and go to Tundra, it's not gonna be the worst, it's definitely not the best. We're gonna put it in the middle into B tier. Then we get to the two coldest and most hospitable, no non-hospitable inhospitable that's what i wanted to say uh biomes we have ice sheet first and the game the name is gonna tell you it's it's ice sheet it's uh there's there's quite a lot of ice you cannot farm on it you cannot grow on it but there's usually gonna be a couple rocks around there's gonna be a couple of smaller hills and around those smaller hills there's gonna be rocky so the soil that you can plant stuff in just like an extreme desert Alas, over here, you will actually need to build walls around that. You're gonna heat that area, and then you're gonna also have to provide light unless you're gonna try living on mushrooms, which can be done. So it's gonna be quite a bit of an effort to try to survive on the ice sheet, but it is doable. With knowledge and some luck, surviving an ice sheet is completely normal and doable. I have done it, many people have done it as well. And you can, you can do it as well, but I would advise you play in some other biomes first, get used to how the whole game works, and then you go to Ice Sheet. One thing to remember, every animal you see, hunt it down. That is your food. If you want to survive early on, every animal is gonna be a food source. But still, we cannot really put Ice Sheet anywhere above an F tier because it's still such an hospitable and hospitable place that yeah, death is almost guaranteed but what is truly inhospitable and hopeless well that is sea ice it's almost impossible to survive in sea ice without some proper mods but it can be done it's not easy and you have to be pretty pretty dang good at the game and have quite a lot of luck with a proper start and proper things moving in to survive sea ice sea ice challenge you can definitely check it out on youtube lots of people tried it lots of people have done it i have went for it as well but with mods but yeah sea ice if you're just looking at it vanilla it's just a sheet of ice floating on the sea there is no minerals no rock no place to grow anything all you have is what you come over there with and you have to try to survive on a couple of animals that are gonna show up. There's gonna be some snow bunnies running around and maybe like an ice wolf or something like, I don't know what they're called, uh, you know, the, 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 the wolves. And maybe a bear, 
that's really the only thing you can kind of hunt down a polar bear or something like that so you have to hope for traders to show up you have to have something to trade with them to get food and try to survive it's gonna be as cold as seven hells and you're gonna have to somehow survive in there good luck cannibalism is your friend over here but in reality mods are your friend if you want to survive over here so sea ice the worst place if you want to go for it we're gonna put it in f tier it was never really even meant to be a proper survival area or proper base area in the game it's just like for traversing around but still once you know how to play the game give it a try i'm sure you're gonna have fun with it though and there's my ranking i am sure not everybody's gonna agree with this let me know in the comments what you think should be s tier what you think should be f tier and if you haven't seen my previous rankings for let's say traits or range weapons melee weapons armor all that it's gonna be linked up there it's gonna link in the description and i hope you enjoy this i'll see you next time <music>